Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here in YouTube you know me as Epic Fantasy, and this is my latest tutorial. This is part one of three parts on how to make fast, easy, cheap, and good-looking dungeon terrain for a tabletop gaming. And um, it's very modular, so see all these wall units? You can move them around to have a different dungeon every time you play. Kind of fun. And, I'm, and um, I'll show you all of this, how to do all of that. And the size is unlimited, and it's really, really cheap to do. You can go down, run down to your local hardware store, home improvement store, and buy yourself a sheet of this for 11 bucks. And in this part of the tutorial, part one, I'm going to show you how to make the the board, the base, and it's uh, durable. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, so like I said, you can buy this, a sheet of this down at your um, uh, local home improvement store, Lowe's, Home Depot, any place like that. Almost every place carries it. And it comes in eight foot sections. It's uh, two feet by eight feet. So grab yourself a sheet and um, ask somebody to, ask one of the employees to cut it in half for you, right? And oh, and this one cost me 11 bucks. 11 and change and that's a lot of tabletop terrain and this stuff is perfect and it comes in different colors you know it can be pink it can be blue it can be green doesn't matter but have somebody cut it in half so you can fit it into your trunk of your car or cut it into smaller sections if need be it's no big deal but it's one inch thick that's important so lay it out measure out the size of the tabletop um, game you want, dungeon, the, the size of the dungeon you want, I'm going to make a 24 by 24 inch square. And this stuff is modular. It has a tongue and groove on the side of it, so you can make two or four of them and connect them together to get a larger dungeon. Now the thing about this stuff is, this is um, extruded polystyrene, XPS. Very easy to work with, very light and very strong. But make sure you use a brand new um, X-Acto blade when cutting it. It makes all the difference in the world. Now, let's do our grid. And you can do the grid size you want, but we want to lay out a square grid. And I like inch and a half uh, squares. So use a ballpoint pen or a gel pen to mark it up every inch and a half. And uh, don't worry so much about the ink, doesn't really matter. Just as long as you can see those lines. But take your time with it, do a nice square grid. We're gonna paint over it so the lines don't really matter. They're just guidelines for our cutting. Now grab your exact. see that looks good? 24 by 24. Now grab your X-Acto knife and cut about um, a half inch deep on all those lines. And take your time about it. About a half inch deep. It doesn't matter too much. About So that's halfway through the foam. Then, once you've got all those lines cut, take a sharpened pencil and open those lines up. Open those cuts up. See, let's take a closer look. See, just run the pencil, the sharpened pencil, in those in those cuts. Then, blunt that pencil down. and run it again through those cuts to open it up even further. This makes a nice definition of those squares. Looks really good, particularly once it's painted. And you'll see, the painting technique we use comes out really nice. 
So you can do this as much as you want, but I recommend you do it in stages. Cut, sharpened pencil, blunted pencil, so you don't tear the foam. There is the potential if you try to be too aggressive with it, you can tear the foam. Which I guess doesn't matter in a dungeon. You don't mind having some torn squares, I guess. But it looks good. So now let's go ahead and paint it. First, cover the whole thing in a nice, dark, rich, um, thick coat of black. And make sure you get the black in those cuts. That's important. Let it soak right into those cuts. And once it's painted, let it dry before we move on to the next step. Put a fan on it. It'll dry in five minutes. I use just a regular old acrylic paint. If you're tempted to use a spray paint, I say don't. Because many types of spray paints will actually melt the foam. Unless you want a created melted look, but spray paint will often melt the foam. There's only a few different types of latex based spray paints. So now let's do the important step here is called dry brushing. That's where you put a little bit of white on your brush and then dab most of it off on a rag. And then lightly, see, dab it on the rag and then lightly brush over your squares like this. So you only want a little bit of the white, or you could use gray to get onto the black. But continue to do that. It takes some time and it takes a little bit of practice to get a feel for this. Make sure you use a nice soft bristle brush. You don't want a stiff brush. You want a soft brush. And do that. Do the whole board and if you want it darker, do the whole board again. It will slowly get darker and darker. See my squares are a little bit light. I could probably could have done a I could have done another layer of dry brushing over the whole thing to make it a little bit grayer, but that's that's okay. We're going to stick with this. Just keep at it. You'll get the feel of it. Dry brushing. But there we go. So now let's finish it off by sealing it. You can mix PVA glue, regular old white glue, 50-50 with water, and use that as a sealant, or you can use Mod Podge, which is wonderful. I use the Mod Podge Gloss and then apply a nice liberal coat to the surface of your game terrain, your dungeon terrain. Do the whole thing. Get it in the, into those cracks you cut. Get it on the board. Just do the whole thing nice and thick. Now, that white color, see how it's now it's the Mod Podge is making it white. Same with the glue will make it white. That's okay. That will, when it dries, that, that white disappears and it's clear. And that's it. Your board is done. Set it somewhere and let it dry. And let's take another quick peek at this. When it's done. It's got a nice shiny surface. It looks really good. And it's durable. So you can play games on it. There we go. Now you can make another one. Make four of them. You can, it's unlimited. You get an awful lot of the foam for a low price you can make these and assemble them together stack them together to make bigger dungeons so in the second part I'm going to show you how to make these modular pieces so you can lay out dungeons of just about any configuration you want with corridors and rooms and small rooms and big rooms and you know so you always have a different kind of dungeon whatever you want doesn't that look good okay so let me see that'll be part two but um, here, here's a couple of things, other things if you're interested in dungeons and miniatures and stuff like that. Let me show you a couple more videos that I have. This one is um, how to sculpt a fantasy miniature. And that is not clay. That is a special stuff, a two-part epoxy that you mix together. You sculpt your figure and you've got about two hours before it hardens like stone. And I show you what that is and how to use it in that tutorial. The link is uh, in the description of this video. That's to make your own miniatures. I also have a tutorial on using what's commonly thought of as styrofoam. That's expanded polystyrene. That's the stuff that's like all the little uh, styrofoam balls all kind of compacted together. That makes a nice dungeon too, particularly if you want ruins because you can pick away pieces at it and make it give it a very crumbly look. So that's another video tutorial that I have. The link is in the description of the video. Does that look good? But um, in part two, like I said, we're going to be doing the modular wall sections of the dungeon. And in part three, I'm actually doing an animation inside that dungeon. Uh, thanks. 
Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.